What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our Atari Breakout series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 and 2 of this series, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. Now, if you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts one and two, in which case your program should resemble mine and everything works pretty neatly, except for a few things. First of all, the game doesn't end when the ball touches the ground. Secondly, the ball's starting position is pretty off. And thirdly, we don't really have, you know, a you win and you lose end screen set up. And uh, we also don't have an animation for the ball, which I'll be explaining to you what I mean. So let's get right into our program. The first thing I'm going to be doing is fixing that ball animation. And uh, what I mean is that when the program actually starts, the player has no idea which direction the ball's actually pointing in. So he's going to be clueless. And the, since the ball's pretty close to the player right at the beginning, most of the time the player's going to lose on the first try. And we don't really want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is to head over to the costumes of the ball. And uh, I'm going to rename this costume one and I'm going to duplicate this. And what I'm going to do in the second costume is to add in an arrow based on the direction that the ball is going to be pointing in. I'm going to make the color of the arrow green as well, but really you could change this to any color you want. And I think white may actually be a good choice, but I'm going to uh, be sticking around with green. So to draw the arrow, things are pretty simple. You just have in a couple of lines. There's no really arrow drawing tool or something that you can use. So I'm just going to draw a nice arrow like that. So there we are. I think that's going to be pretty good enough for now. Uh, let me edit that a little bit and uh, I'm going to leave it with that. There we are. So you could actually make this arrow a little bit more neater in case you want to, but uh, I'm going to leave that, uh, leave it this way for now. So now you want to head over to the code and what you want to do right here is to add in a show right at the beginning so that, you know, when we actually hide the ball for our end screens, uh, the ball doesn't end up not showing when we actually uh, start playing the next time. So make sure you add in a show right there. What I'm going to do right before this go to X, uh, Y, I'm, uh, is that I'm going to add in or actually do it after. Okay, you want to make sure that it's done before you point in direction. What you want to do is to switch, um, not backdrop, but you want to switch costume to be two. And then you're going to add in a time lag of two seconds. And uh, two seconds is going to be the time that's going to take for all the blocks to initialize. Now, if the time is different in your computer, it may be less if your computer is faster than mine and a little slower if uh, a, a little bit a little bit less if your computer is slower than mine. But uh, you might want to play around with that number a, a little bit until you get to like the optimal point where everything is initialized and then the ball starts to move. So once you figure that number out, what you need to do right after that is to switch costume to one. And uh, if you run this program, you'll notice something strange. And that's the fact that the arrow never actually points in the direction we want to. And that's because the ball's direction is going to be what it was the previous time. And if we wanted to point um, in a straight direction, what we need to do is to add in a point in direction 90. And that's going to make sure that the ball's like this. And the player actually knows, you know, where the ball's going to come right before the ball actually ends up coming. I'm also going to fix in the X and Y position of the ball. So the Y position is going to be negative 40 and the X position is going to be uh, zero. So uh, I think the costumes are all set up with that. And uh, I think, yep, that's where I'm going to leave it. So now when we hit the green flag, uh, no, oopsie. Uh, I think we set up something wrong. So let me actually fix that right now. So I just figured out what the bug was and it was the fact that our go-to actually needs to be before we change the direction. So uh, make sure you add it in there. Otherwise, what the ball is going to do is to move into its last saved position and that may be anywhere on the screen. So it may be even right at the top and in that case, we'll be getting some really, really weird errors. So to fix that, just make sure that, you know, your go-to is right above. And now you should have a pretty nice working game. And already our code is, you know, our game is a lot better than what it was. I'm also going to hide all these pesky little variables because they just clutter up the screen and make the UI way, way worse than it should be. So now when I hit the green flag and actually uh, test out this program, you can see things are actually a lot better now. And uh, all that's left is to actually program the you win and the you lose end screens and when to actually activate them. So before I do that, I'm going to head over to the player and uh, just check if I added a show and hide and turns out I did. And now let's get into our end screens. 
So our end screens are really just going to be a set of backdrops. So to do that, just head over to, uh, to the stage tab and click on backdrops. And you want to uh, click on paint a new backdrop within choose a backdrop. And uh, the first end screen that I'm going to have is going to be called you win. And this is going to be the case if all the blocks are destroyed. I'll be getting into how we're going to activate this a little bit later. But for now, just um, learn on how to code this in. So I'm going to set the fill to be something a little light, like a really light shade of um, yellow. I think this is a pretty neat color. I'm also going to set the outline to be transparent. But really, you could play around with this. This is your end screen, guys. So make sure you're customizing this as you want. I'm going to make uh, sure that the rectangle occupies pretty much the entire screen so that, you know, everything works out pretty neatly and uh, nothing's really hidden with a white color. And then I'm going to have in a nice little blue text, which is going to say you win. So right here, I'm going to have a you win. And to actually magnify this, all you have to do is to click on the scroll bar and actually drag this. So this would be a pretty nice you win in my opinion. And uh, now I'm just going to duplicate this and change the score to be uh, you lose. I'm going to change that color to be red and uh, that should be it. That should be your end screen. So I'm just going to change it to red. There we are. Now I'm going to head over to the code. Wait, actually before that, I'm going to call this you lose. I think it's uh, do automatically duplicated as you went to and uh, just change that you lose. Okay. So now head over to your code and click on the block sprite. Okay. And uh, what you want to do right now is to actually initialize a variable called score. And uh, this is not actually going to hold what you think. Uh, we are going to increment the score every single time we touch a block, but it's not going to actually, you know, be shown to the player unlike most games. Okay. So what I'm going to do when the green flag is clicked is to set the score to be zero and uh, I'm going to increment the score when uh, actually I broadcast that message. So uh, head over to the ball and uh, now you can change when you actually receive change direction. What you can do is just change score by one. And uh, this, uh, this should make sure that your score actually increments. So now what I'm going to do is to actually um, make a simple if condition right here. So uh, what I'm going to do is to grab a when green flag is clicked. I'm going to zoom in so you can see better. Uh, have in a forever loop. Okay, not a repeat until but a forever loop. And uh, what I'm going to have is if the score is equals to the number of blocks right here. Okay, so the number of blocks is going to be six times four. That's 24. So if score is equals to 24, then it means that the game is over and I'm just going to broadcast a message which is going to be called you win. So I'm going to change, click on new message and I'm going to say you win. Perfect. Now uh, we actually haven't programmed what's going to happen if you know the player wins and we'll actually be doing that a little bit later. But what I'm going to do before that is to actually paint in a nice little ground. So to do that, I'm going to choose in a little, you know, bluish green color. And uh, what I'm going to do is to have in the saturation set to about 42. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle that's going to be, you know, throughout the screen. So there we are. I'm going to center that and uh, also reduce the, you know, uh, width a little bit. And I think this is a pretty neat ground. So what I'm going to do right here is uh, when I uh, receive, uh, when the green flag is clicked, what I'm going to do is to head over right to the bottom of our screen. And uh, this is going to control when the you lose end screen is initialized because uh, if the ball is touching this, it means that the player has lost. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is to have in, uh, I'm actually going to show, okay, because uh, I'm going to hide this when, you know, the end screens are going to pop up. So make sure you add in a show right there. So uh, when the green flag is clicked, we're going to show, and then we're going to enter into a forever loop. Now inside this forever, we're going to have an if then. And so if we're touching uh, the ball, then it means we're going to initialize our you lose end screen. So we're just going to broadcast a message which says uh, you lose. So change new message and I'm going to say you uh, lose. So there we are. I'm just going to set, uh, uh, set it to be you lose and click on OK. And that's going to be your you lose message set up. And uh, now I'm going to head over to the paddle sprite and I'm going to be setting the backdrop to be um, initially I'm going to set it to stars. Okay. And uh, we'll get into how we're going to change the backdrop when the you win and you lose end screens are set up right after we change our speed to be based on which block we're hitting. In case my last statement actually confused you, this is what we're basically going to do. So in case, uh, you know, the, uh, the ball actually touches this uh, blue block, then we're going to set the speed to be whatever it was right at the beginning. 
uh, assuming that the speed wasn't more already. Now if it touches the red block, then we're going to increase the speed even more. Then if it touches the yellow block, then it's going to increase the speed even more. And then finally, if it touches the green block, the speed's going to be, you know, at a maximum. So that with each block that the user actually touches, um, actually making uh, playing the game is going to be harder and harder. So to do that, just um, click the stop key and then head over to your blocks, okay? Now what I'm going to do is to look at the costumes and look at, you know, which costume is first. That's our blue costume. And then uh, if the blue costume is the costume, then I'm not going to change, you know, the uh, speed at all. But if the costume is red, then what I'm going to do is to actually increment the speed. Not actually increment right here, we're actually just setting the speed to be something else. But um, you'll understand what I mean, okay? So what I'm going to have right here is if touching ball, and right after we broadcast a change direction, what I'm going to do is to have a simple if, okay? Or rather an if else. So uh, on the first if then, what we're going to have is if, uh, the costume name, not the costume number, but the costume name. And you can do that by heading over to the looks category and grabbing this block which says costume number and changing that to costume name. So if the costume name is one, then it means it's the blue uh, backdrop, okay? So we don't really change it to anything. Now if the costume number is two, then we'll actually set the ball speed to be something else. But this is assuming that the ball hasn't touched some other color already. So if it's already touched, you know, this, um, a green color, then we do not want it to change the speed when it touches the red color. So what we're going to do uh, is to have an, an AND condition and speed is less than 20. I'm going to increment it by two every single time, you know, the ball touches one of the blocks. So initially, I think our speed was 18, I believe, uh, or oh wait, it was 10. Sorry about that. So uh, and our speed is less than 12. That's going to be our code. Um, so our speed is less than 12. So 12 is greater than speed. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is basically just uh, increment the ball speed by two. So set ball speed to um, 12, there we are. Now I'm going to duplicate this and now I'm going to change this to three. And now if this is the case, then uh, this uh, ball speed needs to be about 14. Now we'll set it to be 14. Now I'm going to duplicate this once more and say if ball speed equals to four, um, then I'm going to be setting the ball speed to be 16 and uh, just change this to 16 as well. Now, if the uh, costume is one, then we just set the ball speed to whatever it was and we won't change it at all. So just leave it for now. In case you just leave an else empty, you're not really going to um, run into any bugs. But just to make our code a little bit cleaner, what I'm going to do is to change that else to be an if so that we don't have any, you know, empty loops. Now I'm going to put all of this right before we delete our clone. And now our ball speed is actually going to be changing. And uh, when you actually click the green flag and test this out, now you can see that when we hit the red bar, and you'll see that in a second, uh, the ball speed actually changes to be faster. And it's going to become faster and faster and harder and harder for the player every time the ball actually changes its speed. And that's the entire point of the game. So now let's actually get into programming the end screens. Since we already have our messages set up, I'm going to have all of them, you know, perform their various roles in the paddle sprite. So when I actually receive um, the you lose, um, first I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I'm going to set the backdrop to be you lose, and then I'm also going to hide myself. And that's pretty simple, and that's really all we're going to do in most sprites. So now I'm going to change this you lose to be you win, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing, except for the fact that I'm going to switch the backdrop to be you win instead of you lose. I think that's pretty much all we'll be doing with our paddle, so I'm just gonna clean up my code right away. Now I'm gonna head over to the ball sprite and do something that's really, really similar. So when I receive you win, I'm gonna hide, and when I receive you lose as well, I'm going to hide. So uh, when I receive you win, just a hide, and just duplicate this once more to when I receive you lose, I'm gonna hide as well. So perfect, clean this up once again. So as far as all our blocks are concerned, What's going to happen is that this game over needs to be triggered to be true regardless of uh, whether the player wins or the player loses. So I'm going to do that in the paddle sprite. So I'm going to have when I receive you win, I'm going to basically set you uh, the game over variable to be true. So that's going to make sure that all our clones are actually deleted. So set game over to true. And I'm also going to do that if the player actually loses. Okay, so set game over to true. Um, there we are. And uh, this is going to make sure all our clones are deleted. And lastly, in the ground, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. So when I receive um, not change direction, you lose, I'm going to hide. 
And similarly, when I receive you win, I'm going to hide. So duplicate that, uh, change that to you win, and um, just clean up. And there we are, we're good to go. At this point in time, if you actually did everything correctly, you might start to notice that the you win end screen never actually pops up. And the reason for that is actually pretty simple. So now if the ball actually hits two blocks at the same time, then we're actually going to just have one message uh, that is the change direction message. And this score isn't really going to be changing by one. So what we need to do to fix that is to just put that change score by one inside the clone of the block. So what I'm going to do is to just have the change score by one right here. And this is going to ensure that your score changes by one and your ball actually turns out. So now when I finally test it, I'm going to be playing the game right now. You might start to notice that there's actually no more bugs and everything works fine. I'm going to do that right in front of you just to make sure that happens and uh, everything works fine. The red blocks hit and the speed changes as well. Now when the yellow blocks are hit, the red block um, code doesn't make sure that the speed is changed. And uh, finally, when we start hitting the green blocks, the uh, speed changes to a maximum. And uh, then when we finally actually finish off and we hit all the blocks, we have a nice you win end screen pop up. I'm also going to be testing the you lose end screen. So when the ball actually hits the bottom, we have a you lose. And there's one final thing that I'll do when we receive the you win and you lose messages. And that's actually to stop all our code. And if we don't do this, then our code is going to keep running in the background. And that's not really a good thing to do. So I'm just going to add in a stop all right after the you win and you lose things are uh, end screens are actually, you know, done showing themselves. And that, ladies and gentlemen, would be your entire Atari breakout game. If you've enjoyed this game series, then make sure you click on the video on your screen right now. And that will take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next series.